We started paddling the Speed River where it joins its tributary, the Iramosa River, in downtown Guelph. It's very much an urban river at that point, with people lounging by its banks on park benches, eating ice cream cones and playing lawn bowling and having picnics. The paddling is good and the water is deep here because of the Guelph Dam. The only hazard is dodging the flocks of geese and ducks who are drawn here because of the parklands that surround it, because so many people feed them. After you do a short portage of the dam, you begin to see the river in its more natural state. But there are still a series of smaller dams that you have to contend with as you leave the city. We were surprised at how lush and green the waterway was. With the hot, humid weather and vines climbing up the trees that were hanging over the river, it felt almost tropical. Dragonflies buzzed across the water and tiny crayfish swam beneath the surface. Once you pass underneath the Hanlon Expressway Bridge, you see and hear the rumble of the municipal sewage treatment plant. As recently as the 1970s, the Speed River was considered a dead river because of the discharge from that plant. The river was once so choked out with pollution it couldn't sustain any life. There were no fish or really any other marine life downstream of Guelph. The river that had drawn so much settlement to Guelph, Hespeler, and Preston and powered their early industries had been killed by the people who relied on it. Today, thanks to improving environmental protections and modernized sewage treatment infrastructure, the river is making a comeback. It feels wild and untamed in places, especially in the long paddle between Guelph and Cambridge. Once we left the city, we saw the Speed River as it used to be. The stretch between Guelph and Hespeler is heavily wooded, with little signs of development except for the old Dolime quarry outside of town, a cluster of cottages and the odd country home on the river. A great heron stalked us as we went along the river, feasting on the small fish that had returned to the speed. The water levels improved as we began to enter Hespeler. The impact of the dam at Jacob's Landing can be felt far upstream, creating a large lagoon filled with wildlife. Beyond the dam, you can see the remains of the old woolen and textile mills that helped turn Hespler into an early industrial hub. It had taken us most of the day to get this far, so we had to end our trip here, but not before we jumped in and went for a swim. <laughs>